afternoon. Dwayne here, Dry Creek Ringer School. Obviously, we're back in the tack room again today. The weather is just horrendous. I mean, it's just storming and rainy and windy and chilly. And, and I was going to do something uh, outside today with the horse, and uh, but it's just, and we've had so much rain, it's just a giant. Uh, we're just on a mud pie out here. And uh, so we we stuck back in the back in the tack room. Uh, yesterday was out on a ride, and uh, for the school, and they got hit with a big thunderstorm, rainstorm, a little bit of hail come down, and and lightning. And we got a rule: first thing of lightning you see, you turn around and head back to the barn because lightning's not something to play with out here. And uh, but. The, there wasn't any warning. It was when the lightning hit, it hit right now and it hit hard. And the horses kind of got a bit nervous and so they turned around and came back. And uh, it's just been storming and raining and carrying on ever since. So we're going to try to get a video out today and see if we can't just have an interesting conversation. Maybe learn a little something. Maybe stir somebody up. Maybe aggravate somebody. Maybe offend somebody. Who knows? We'll see what we can do. Um, I posted something on uh, on Instagram, just a little short, whatever it is, story this week, talking about hard work um, with your horse. Now, I uh, I showed on the last video I did, I, I think it was the last video I did on here, I showed my new mare, um, and Ray, little bay quarter horse mare and man she is turning out to be a delight i've been waiting for years to get another little mare to replace you've heard me talk about scotch the little mare i had in alaska for so long a little bay roan mare and i've been looking for one like her for years now and i think i have found one when i got her she uh she was pretty snappy um a lot of energy, a lot of life, a lot of temper. Um, just not, didn't want to stand, doesn't want to, you know. And all that is natural and normal to be expected, especially on a, a young horse. She's six and, uh, and a hot bred horse. And she is bred up champions both sides, uh, cutting horse, reining horse, cow horse. Oh, she'll, she'll track a cow. You go out among the cows. To, and uh, put her on a cow, man. She'll track that rascal, and uh, but not, not the calm, dependability, not the logical side that I that I was looking for. Which I knew that comes with time, it comes with age, comes with maturity, and so I have just been riding her a lot, and we had a couple of rides this week that were really physical, really. Uh, one in particular, it was really demanding. And when she come back for that ride, and a couple before that, it's just every time she comes back, she's a little bit better. Um, she's a little bit calmer. She stands when she comes back. We do, well, I'm a strong believer in, in what we call soaking. Uh, we bring a horse back from a ride. A good ride, a, tire, a ride where they've really worked, really exerted, really got tired. We come back, tie them up, pull the head stall, put a halter on them, tie them up, loosen the cinch a little bit, and let them stand there. For how long? Depends on the circumstances. Uh, sometimes for an hour. Uh, and I call it soaking. And it just, to me, it kind of, instead of giving them the mindset, well, we hurry through this, we hurry home, we get the saddle jerked off, we get dumped out in the pasture, and they're always anticipating and trying to get to that next good thing. And it kind of helps settle them down so that they're not so anxious about that. But the work, you work them, we went way back up here up these draws and coolies and out on top of these hills up here, and it was, it was, a, it was a climb. We got to the top, and we just stopped. And she just planted her feet and just put her head down and rested. It's like she's learning like a good soldier, rest every chance you get, you know, because you don't know when you're going to get another chance. And it calms them down. And uh, I mentioned in that Instagram post that you can't make a good horse without wet saddle blankets. 
Now, wet saddle blankets, I was talking to a trainer one time. Uh, he was actually out of Homer, Alaska. And we were talking. He said he had a lady wanted him to help sort out one of her horses. And he checked out the horse. And he told her, he said, ma'am, the only thing this horse needs is just wet saddle blankets. Well, he told me, he said, Dwayne, he said, I'm not lying, man. Next time I drove by her barn, she had all her saddle blankets out on a clothesline and was hosing them down with a water hose. Wet saddle blankets is just talking about sweat. It's talking about work. Uh, you can't make a good horse without wet saddle blankets. Sometimes you need to take a young horse or an older horse, a horse that's head is up here, his energy's up here, his focus is out there. He doesn't want to be still. He doesn't want to stand. He doesn't want to listen. Instead of picking fights, instead of running the hound out of them in the arena, what they need is about 8, 10, 12 miles of rough going on the trail or out across the pasture at a good, steady, good, steady hammer and walk uh, and just doing that and doing that and doing that and uh, until they get sweaty. And that's what that's referring to. And it's, it's, it's mandatory to make a good horse. I, I believe that that's, that's me. It's, it's, you got to have it. Um, and it's, as I mentioned in that little clip I did, uh, the same thing works for kids. Now I raised my, my wife and I raised seven kids and, uh, the boys, we had two boys, four girls, and then a boy. And, uh, when the boys got out of hand, we didn't, we didn't put them on Ritalin. When they had trouble focusing, when they had trouble being still, when they had trouble, you know, with their attitude and had trouble, that's just boy. Uh, that's the makings of what is going to make a man into a go-getter, into a thinker, into a dreamer, into a, an inventor into a writer, that's things. And these are not things that, that we want to cover up with drugs. Now, I know some folks are going to get upset about that, and I don't mean to be ugly about it, all right? But I would take my boys out. I will, my youngest son, they were going to try to put him on, on Ritalin and stuff. And I'm like, Thunder, no, you're not doing that. What are you going to put him on? We're going to put him on Woodpile. We're not going to put him on Ridland. We're going to put him on wood pile. Now, what does that mean? It means we have a huge pile of wood out here. And that pile of wood's going to be transferred from point A to point B. And that's his job. We're going to put him on rock pile. We're going to pick up the rocks and put them in the driveway where they need to be. Uh, and I'm going to be out there with him. All right. He's going to work with me. Uh, we're going to put him on fence post. We're going to put him on 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 uh, post hole diggers we're going to work we're going to work uh we're going to we're going to the boys when when things got up it's like hey saddle the horses where we're going we're going to go and we're going to ride for 27 miles today and uh bring them back in the line bring them back it's works what you need uh it's what your horse needs it's what your kids need. Not work. It doesn't always have to be labor, but it has to be physical, exertive uh, activity. Uh, children who run around outside and play and yell and climb trees and get dirty and chase the dog and chase the chickens and, and swim and do all this, they, they come in and they're too exhausted and... Uh, that everything is worked and put back into place and uh and it's tremendous and it works for you as well um look there's been more than one time where i have had emotional mental um uh, volcano inside of me about to blow and i've gone out to the wood pile with a split maw and an axe and found great release and great calm in that to go to the gym and blow off the pressure in the gym. I know you wouldn't know it by looking at me, but I used to go to the gym a lot. And I just lifted free weights, pick heavy stuff up, put it back down, pick it back up again, put it back down. And you leave with things are back in order and things are back in place. We don't work enough. 
we don't get enough physical exertion, our kids don't get enough physical exertion, our dogs don't get enough physical physical exertion. I can say it. Words are hard. I was in Alaska one winter working in a feed store up there, and I had a lady come in, and she said, I, I need a different feed for my dog. He's having, he's chewing his paws and his nervous energy, and I think, I think the dog food I'm using is not right. So I asked her, I said, what dog food are you feeding him? And she showed me. And I thought, well, so I asked her, what breed of dog is it? And she said, it's a Catahoula Leopard. Now, a Catahoula Leopard is a dog that I think was bred, came into being down in Louisiana or Texas, down in that area. Very, very athletic, um, very intelligent, very athletic, very working dog, very hunting and working dog, not a house dog. And I asked her, I said, are you keeping this dog in the house? Well, yeah. Yeah, he's my house dog. And I'm like, ma'am, this dog is not designed to be in the house. He's not a house dog. Well, most boys are not house boys. All right, they're not, they're not designed to be in the house. You say, my boy, he loves to sit on the couch and play video games. He ain't designed for that. He just don't know no better. And a lot of, a lot of the problems that children have have because they have that because the parents who are the mature ones who should know better are not able or willing to direct what that child should be doing and get that child out and get that child exercising and running and playing and exploring and uh, falling down and, like I said, getting muddy and uh, drinking from the water hose and, and just whatever it is, you know, um, but your horse is the same way. Your horse needs to be tired. Now, somebody somebody got on there and said, nope, not true. Uh, you have to build a bond with your horse. Now, I'm going to talk about this right here, and there's going to be a lot of people disagree with me, and that's okay. Just be courteous, okay? You don't need to build a bond with your horse. That's, that is a thought that has come about these days, and it's just foolishness. It's foolishness, okay? That's, there's nothing wrong with building a bond with your horse. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying it's not necessary. Now, I've mentioned in another video before that the relationship that I build with my horses is a professional relationship. I train my horses to have a professional outlook and a professional approach to life. They're not pets. Okay. Now a, um, a bond with a horse isn't bad, but think about this. All right. If you work for a living, if you work for a living and you deal with customers, is it necessary that you build a bond with every customer? Now, stop and think about it, all right? Don't do a knee-jerk, idiotic, politically correct answer, all right? Do you have to build a bond with that customer to be able to work with that customer? No, of course not. Um, I mean, you can be courteous, you can smile, you can be friendly, you can do this, you can do that, but you don't have to build an emotional bond with them. If you do build an emotional bond with them, that could be profitable and it could become a problem. Because it could come to the point, well, looky there. Oh, I'm just going to leave that in there. I ain't even going to cut that out. We're in the tax shed. It's that time of year, and the fly landed on the, on the camera screen. Um, if you do build an emotional bond with a customer, then it's going to be hard. Listen to me. If you have to make a hard call with that customer, an unpopular call with that customer out of business, it's going to be hard to do that. You see what I'm saying? Uh, so you don't have to build a bond with your horse. You have to teach your horse. Now, in the world I live in, um, you've got professional horses. And that horse needs to be a professional regardless of who gets on that horse's back. That horse needs to know what his job is. And he needs to know the communication signals. And he needs to willingly follow those signals regardless of who's sitting on his back, regardless of who's holding the reins. Emotional bond is not necessary. 
All right, emotional bond is not necessary, and in some instances, it is not desirable. Because I've been in this business wrangling, packing, everything, years, side, just a lot of experience. I'm going to stick somebody, poke somebody with a stick again. But I have seen so many women. And it's, it's true. Now, don't get mad at me. All right, it's true. Way more than men, so many women build such an emotional bond with their horse that they can't bear to tell their horse no when the horse is doing wrong. They can't make the hard decisions for what's best for the horse. It all comes down to an emotional bond. Um, you don't need an emotional bond. Okay? You need to be professional. You need to teach your horse to be professional. And your horse needs to work. Your horse needs to work to the point that you have a horse that when you come up and you tie them up, they're fuzzling, they're spinning, they're looking, they're winning at other horses, they're pawing the dirt, they're pawing, they dig a big dang trough out there at your, at your hitching post. That is a horse that's not working hard enough. That horse doesn't have enough miles. That horse doesn't have enough sweat. Because if you would work that horse and sweat that horse, and I mean seriously work that horse and go out and ride and ride and ride. Then when you come in, if he's a bit tired, he's going to be happy to just stand there and be still. Unless you're really messing up with his feed. Unless you're dumping a whole bunch of sweet feed and, and high-protein stuff he doesn't need and you're overfeeding him. Then you're riding the feed. That could become an issue. You got a horse that's winning that's dancing down the trail. You got a horse that, that's... Um, that's a jigging down the trail sideways in Carolina. That's a horse that ain't worked hard enough. He doesn't need trained. He needs ridden. He needs ridden. He doesn't need trained. He doesn't need to be schooled. He needs to be tired. Less training, more tiring. And that's easy. Because you may not know enough to train everything that needs to be trained. But if you have a horse, you should know enough to get up in that saddle and be able to go. And owning a horse is a commitment. It's a commitment. It's not a commitment to take it down and pay him $400 a month and stick it in a stall somewhere and have somebody come out twice a week and ride it for 30 minutes in an arena. Uh, because you can't be bothered or you can't get free to go down and do it. You shouldn't have a horse. Saying some hard things this morning, all right? Uh, you, you got a horse stuck in a stall somewhere at a boarding stable, and you're paying somebody to ride that horse around an arena for 30 minutes twice a week, and then you come out and try to ride your horse, and your horse is prancing, your horse is dancing, your horse is whinnying, your horse is going around, around, around. You took on a commitment that you can't fulfill. Now, horse doesn't need training. He needs tiring. He needs to work. He needs to get the idea that, you know what, uh, when I get a chance to stand, you go to a branding or a cattle gather on a ranch, you got a lot of big, hot bred, um, really papered, well-fed horses standing tied up along the fence, just standing there with their head down. What is the difference? The difference is these guys know that I need to rest while I can. Because when he puts that bit in my mouth and we go riding, I don't know when we're going to stop. I don't know when I'm going to rest. And I am now mature to the point that all that foolishness of a colt, all that pointless, senseless pawing and twisting and neighing and moving and don't have room in that in my life anymore. I'm too old and uh, too mature and too wise to do that. Um, and the horses, they know that. And so they're like, we're going we're gonna to come in here and we're going to stand. And every once in a while there will be a colt that's just, that's just in training. And I'll walk by and see that colt and I'll just grin. I'm like, yep, that'll change. You'll have a different outlook at the end of the day, son. Um, and it's not a bad thing. It's the same thing with us. In this day and age, we just don't exert enough. We don't get tired enough. Uh, we just have all this nervousness. Our mind is going zip, 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 zip. 
uh, and, uh, and our emotions are up in the air and we're depressed or we're angry or we're frustrated or whatever. And it's, it's a lack of physical labor. It's a lack of physical labor. Um, you said, do I not live in a city? Um, you know, I don't have, I don't have firewood. I don't have fence posts. I don't have that. I don't have this. I don't have that. I work an office job. I work in a cubicle. I work in an attorney's office. Stop paying somebody to mow your yard. Stop paying somebody to clean out your gutters. Stop paying somebody to do everything for you. Uh, do everything that you can do physically yourself. And uh, go to the gym. If you got to go to the gym, take your Saturdays and take up biking, take up running, take up walking. You say, well, how much should I walk? How much should I bike? How much should I? Until you're tuckered out. You know, you can come home from the gym. Or you can come home from a bike trail, even in the city. You can come home from wherever, and you can be so tired that you'll forget to be depressed. You can be just, I'm just too tired to be angry about the world today. I'm too tired to be angry about this political party, or that social construct, or this, or that. I'm just, I just don't care anymore. Because I have exerted your mind. Okay, you've got your mind, you've got your emotions, and you've got your body. If you're concentrating on your mind, we've talked about this before, your brain, maybe it's your job, maybe you've got a real technical job, maybe it's a really stressful job, maybe you're a school teacher, um, maybe, you're, maybe you're an attorney, maybe you're whatever you are, uh, and so it's a very mental all right. Uh, maybe it's very, your life is very emotional, but if you leave out the body, you're out of balance. And that's what we do with our horses. We, we concentrate on training. We concentrate on this bit and this hand here and this here and that, and we leave out the body and listen, trotting 15 minutes around a round pen, that is not going to tire out a horse. It's not going to do it. So the horse is not getting, the horse is being left out of the physical side that he needs as much as we're leaving it out of our children and out of ourselves. Okay. Um, I, uh, I had, I knew a fellow one time and he said, Dwayne, you realize there's people that are born and they live their entire life and they die and they never get their hands in the soil. They live in the city, they live on concrete, and they never get their hands in the dirt. Never. And that's just no way to live. When you sweat, you sweat out more than just the physical toxins out of your body. You'll sweat the emotional toxins out and the mental toxins out just as well. Okay? Uh, and if you come, if you come to the school... And I teach and you study and we go through the week. You can walk away having a good week and I can walk away having a good week. And we never emotionally bonded. We don't need to bond. We don't need to emotionally bond. I can go in to wherever. I can go in to Big R down here to get, um, to get a new head stall or something. I can carry that head stall up to the counter. I can lay it on the counter. The young lady can tell me, can ring it up. She can be courteous and she can say, that'll be $59.95. I can reach in my wallet, pull out $59.95 and hand that to her. She can ring it up, put it in the bag. I can smile and say, ma'am, you have a good afternoon and walk out of the store. And there was no emotional bonding involved. Why in the Sam Hill can you not see that that's what you need with your horse? That's what you need with your horse. Your horse needs to be worked and trained and then work some more to the point that you can go up and have a, um, what's the word I want? My mind just went, my mind just went away. An interaction. 
You can go up and have an interaction with your horse, and there's no emotional bonding. Take the emotion out of it. There's times with your kids, you got to set the emotion aside. You got to say, look, you got to go get tired. You got to go get dirty. You need to scratch your knee up. You need to fall out of a tree. All right, you need to walk out there and uh, you need to throw this rope around the neck of that calf to see if you can. And then he needs to drag you a little ways. Uh, and you'll have a cool story to tell. And uh, you'll be tuckered by the end of the night. And uh, you'll have a different and better outlook on life. All right? So, metaphorically speaking, get your butt off the couch. No. Realistically speaking, get your butt off the couch. Realistically speaking, get your kid's butt off the couch. And metaphorically speaking, get your horse's butt off the couch. Because between the three of you, ain't none of you worth a plug nickel. If you're not out there physically sweating and learning and taking chances and going and getting tired. All right? Get tired. Less training, more tiring. Okay? Now, good. We're done with that. I don't know why that was so... Sticky today, but it was felt like something I, I needed to put out there, all right? And if you don't like it, well, uh, sorry. And But if you don't like it, that means you probably need it, okay? So a couple of things here. What cigar? I've just been flapping my gums so much. I'm having a hard time keeping it going. It's a good cigar. This is actually a Cohiba Red Dot, um, and uh, it's got that... Uh, I believe it's Cohiba Red Dot. It's got a Cameroon wrapper, which you it's all you won't be able to see on there, but it's it's really toothy wrapper. Uh, and there's got the the little seed spots on there, the little spice spots on there that Cameroons tend to have. And I think these have a Indonesian binder and Dominican filler, uh, but it makes for a very flavorful kind of spicy uh, cigar. It's really good. Um, of course, we, uh, you know, we're sponsored by CigarPlace.biz, and I, and I got on there and looked, and they've actually got a pretty good sale going on on these Cohiba Red Dots. Uh, but uh, we want to we wanna enjoy this today. We're going to finish this out when we're done here. But if you like always, if you're looking for an online source for your cigars, uh, CigarPlace.biz, and uh, they take... Uh, They'll take good care of you. They, they carry good cigars. They got good prices. They ship quick and they ship good. And so you want to you wanna be aware of that. The other thing is, is we have our schedule up for school for next year. Now, we're thoroughly booked this year and we've got a waiting list. Um, not going to, unless a miracle happens, not going to be able to get in this year. Um, but we do have our schedule for next year. It's up on the website, www.drycreekwranglers, plural, dot com, drycreekwranglers.com. And uh, there's a couple of changes, so you want to get on there and pay attention. Uh, the schedule is not exactly the same as we've had for the last two years. We had to uh, make a couple of changes because this is wearing Mom and I out. Uh, we have everybody leave Saturday morning. And here with Sheridan, because the airport, we have a lot of times we have folks come in Saturday night and Sunday, and we start right back over again, and we, we don't have enough downtime. So we've adjusted the schedule for next year, and we've had to adjust the pricing um, because of inflation and, and the economy the way it is. Um, but you can get on there and check things out, and you can call and start booking for next year if you'd like. And uh, I, again, the one thing that isn't changed, we don't book online. Uh, every single person that uh, books for the class has to call and talk to mama personally and get booked up like that, okay? I think that's it. And uh, so I hope, uh, hope you have a good afternoon. I wish you well with your horse. And uh, we, uh, as always, just be logical, be reasonable. Be safe and have fun. And we'll catch you guys next time.